time is 632, so I will call the work session of the mayor and council for the city of Snellville, Georgia, Monday, February 13th, 2023, to order. We do have a quorum. Everyone is present. We'll go through the regular business meeting first. We have the invocation by Pastor, does he say Jarrell or Gerald? Collins. Gerald. 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 Okay. Um, we'll have the pledge. Anyone want to volunteer? Dave? Then under ceremonial matters, we've got three proclamation, proclamations. Uh, Black History Month, Go Red for Women, and then uh, one celebrating the life of Parks Walter Mann, uh, one of the organizers of Roman I'm not Reagan. sure. I don't think that's that needs to be read tonight. Oh, okay. Um, oh, are we just I doing think, that? Yeah, I think we're presenting it at, at the, the Reagan. Run the Reagan. Yeah. Okay. But if you feel free to read, if you want. I just threw, threw it on because I wasn't sure, but. <clears throat> and then we'll have um, the minutes, and we've got a performance again by the high school music students. Under the public hearing, we've got four first reads. Uh, the first will be on the bubble tea. Any questions or anything anybody wants to ask <coughs> tonight? Jason on that. Um, and we've got James and Megan Tony. that's Jamie Tony uh, at the Mason Todd house. Can I ask a question <laughs> yeah. Jason? Yes, please. Can you explain why we're, why we may allow a variance for the existing dirt and gravel? <laughs> oh, well, there's a couple of reasons. First, um, I think we heard from the resident, one resident, Tom Flynn, about um, to say the property, I kind of agree, to try to keep it as historic as, as possible <coughs> uh, with less uh, pervious areas. And plus, if they go in and pour that whole driveway, um, they're going to have to probably put in some detention areas too, which the property isn't. And then it becomes more commercialized and <coughs> historical. So, our um, that was kind of our feeling is to keep it. There's only going to be, I think, a couple employees and a few um, you know, customers mm -hmm. over the day. So we think it's a big deal for these kind of guys. <coughs> and that stays as long as they maintain it you know, from what I can So we're doing it mainly for historic reasons. I yeah, I think that's the best. And what are they building behind it now? <coughs> Nothing. Um, that's that old kitchen from that original house. That um, No, there's a, a new structure going up behind it. I just saw it today. Today? Yeah. Um, not none that I was aware of. Alex, do you yeah, know? Well, so. <coughs> like maybe it could be a storage shed. Is that the Methodist Church relocation of the? Didn't I believe the Methodist Church had a relocation of, the, of back there? Mm. Oh. Oh. Um, somebody buried there. Is that what you're trying to say? No, 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 no. Oh. There was a, there was a storage unit. Um, some type of storage unit. Behind the Mason oh, Todd House? On the Mason Todd House? You know, over oh. the <clears throat> I'm sorry. On North Road? I'm in the wrong Hello. place. I'm sorry. So, I thought we were talking about the bubble well, tea plate. Well, no. Over the well house? Yeah, that's, that's just to cover over the well house. That's, that's what this piece is being built. Yeah. yeah. There's that's, just a cover. They knock down okay. the old one, and there's just a cover that there were just a rooftop. So it's like a gazebo oh, so over the well. I just wondered what it was. Yeah, I, I think that's what you're stiff. talking about. Well, I hadn't noticed it before. Yeah, no, we skipped right over that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, we good? We're good now. <clears throat> it's All not right, like John. I put up a garage somewhere yeah. next to a stream or anything. Nobody would do that. All right. And then we have item C, the UDO. Um, this is for the package stores. I haven't seen any comments or questions or anything related to the applications or the ordinance. Have y'all reviewed that yet or not yet? Or I did. I did. I didn't see anything that stood out. Was I haven't issue. yet. 
Okay. And we beat this one pretty good too. Yeah. Not a lot of. I read it word for word. Yeah. <laughs> As if you were going to apply. All right. And then, um, <clears throat> then item D is also for the uh, ordinance to allow the package stores. So that is it for the regular meeting. Uh, on, under correspondence, we did have, I sent an email out to everybody about the Salvation Army, um, the extra ticket that I'll have. I'm planning on going to the lunch. If I didn't hear anything back, is, is anybody interested in going? I know Solange and Christy probably can't. Okay. Then I'm in. All right. So Commerce Club Day. Yeah, it is. <gasps> So if you're out again, I'm gonna miss Greg talking. Oh, I don't know. That's gonna be tough. All right. Well, well let me know in the next couple yeah, of days, I, and then I can. Yeah, let's think about that because I'm not sure that we'll touch base. Okay. Uh, city attorney's report. We're in the executive session. Okay. Uh, all right. Discussion items. Butch. The. Uh, <clears throat> I guess this covers correspondence also. Um, the handout I gave you <coughs> will discuss on the town center on the first item, town center construction progress. Um, this pertains. I don't have that. Did you, uh, you pass those down, Dave? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot be teacher's helper. D. D minus. Should be three pieces there. Um, Kirk. There's an email and two staple things. Yeah. Yep. Kirk is on a plane right now, so he could not be here. <clears throat> but I asked for an update to provide mm -hmm. a little more visual information on these, and then uh, some explanation as to the discussion that they ha they have been having over the course of the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> Roger, David, and Tim. It's Roger White, the engineer. David Brunner, <clears throat> who is the uh, planner for Casto, and Tim Vaccaro, who is the placemaker architect. Mm -hmm. So as we go down this list, <clears throat> just taking them uh, one through seven, one focus was efficient, efficiencies and cost without sacrifice to aesthetics, which was accomplished. For example, the second floor has 150 feet less exterior. This is, <clears throat> if you remember the last discussion we had, we pretty much had a consensus for option one. So that's what they redesigned the building to. And you can see on the, the first handout, you get both the, the exterior and the building footprint with some dimensions. And I know I just got this this afternoon. I know you just got it, but I just wanted everybody to have it to take a look at it over the, over the next week or so. And we're going to get them back in here. But I wanted to give you the update. The second handout is really pretty interesting. The old building design is what the red dotted line stands for. So you can see what we've done. <clears throat> a lot of the expensive corners that had that a contractor would have to be built has been smoothed out and we got a lot more square footage. Uh, and so that gives you kind of a, um, a look at what exterior wise and interior wise the new building or the redesigned building would look like. Um, <clears throat> number two, we like the revised building facade along Street B to the right of the stair tower other improve and other improvements on other facades. Um, when, you, when you look over here, I think Todd, you had a comment earlier when you first looked at it that they kind of look like garage doors. Well, you know, there, <clears throat> there, you know, there are um, a lot of, uh, uh, they could be garage doors um, to open to the outside. So, uh, but, but the, the, the change, obviously, it takes a lot of the masonry out, a lot of the brickwork, and it, uh, um, so that is potentially another cost savings in the, uh, when we, we get the cost estimate for, for this, the, the new design. Uh, number three, second floor is now 8,500 gross square feet. We believe a good size to accommodate various layouts and events. 
And if you look at that uh, that second floor picture, um, that could handle a, a big big wedding event with a lot of outside spillover since the the balcony on the on the top of this building here, it's actually the, the west side, will now extend the full full length, almost the full length of the building. So a lot of spill out area to the front and to the uh, to the west there. <clears throat> Number four, second elevated patio next to the length of the facade facing the library. It'll look good over, that's where the greenway will come in. There'll be outside seating below and the two public restrooms will be out there. It'll be facing the, the, uh, the library there. Um, <clears throat> reduced width of facade facing the promenade by five feet. A little more room around that corner back to ground level patio area when you're going around the basically the southwest corner of the building. Number five brought two-story glass feature around to library facing facade. Uh, you can see that on on this picture. And so it's it I think they have with the changes we made in the masonry in that move kind of balanced the lookout from both sides of the building. Um, it's something that um, you need to take a look at it and and comment with this is by by no means a finished product, but it is a, a product that tried to take into account <clears throat> your desire for option one and some of the needs for expanding from, from potentially one to, to three tenants. Uh, number six gives the uh, first floor a lot of flexibility, and then the total building is now, total building square footage is now about 22, too. So it's, uh, um, it's something to review, to look at. Um, we, if, if we need to have a work session when Kirk is back in town, we can invite him here to go over that, <clears throat> have Tim Vaccaro come. I can tell you as far as pricing is concerned, <clears throat> we received some updated pricing from, uh, from the low bidder in the project, uh, Smith Built, and they were able to save about a quarter of a million dollars on the, the, all the VE work that we did, which is the, uh, the value engineering. And they are now repricing this building as, it's, as it is designed right now. So that's why I'm saying if you want to have a work session, uh, we might need to do it uh, pretty quickly so we can give Smith Built some clarification if anything needs to change so they can include that in their pricing. That's the fastest way we can get to construction. So take a look at all that, um, call with questions, let me know uh, if we need to go to uh, schedule a work session and so we can get to, uh, to the bottom line. <coughs> we need to think about what we're going to call it because we don't need to call it the hall anymore. <coughs> right. No. Well, I the think we're back to the, mar the mercantile. Oh, the mercantile. Okay. That's what I told her. I, I just... figured you'd want to kind of do that. Yeah. Um, We'll have to have spelling lessons. But something to... <laughs> <laughs> First, that'll add more letters in the sign. I personally think we should think about a work session because we so we can get this moving as yeah. Yeah. quickly as we can because we're already so far behind. But yeah. We can set that up very quickly. Uh, other than that... Um, Spelling's terrible there. Uh, coordinating sidewalk work with Northside, we've had a couple of meetings and let them know exactly what we, we expect there on Wisteria. Um, <clears throat> Grove work, I don't know if you've walked through there or if you just want to go up a few floors in the library and take a look, you really get a good picture of everything that's going on in the Grove. The promenade, the sidewalk, the uh, uh, the decks on the side. It really uh, is starting to, to take shape. The, uh, the, the back wall of the fountain and the bench is in place. Uh, we talked to the mosaic artist this week. She is um, still on, we, we still, our schedule matches hers as far as the, uh, the installation of her, her uh, tile mosaic. And it, it's really, it, it's, it's going to be like uh, uh, a very unique feature there. It's really cool looking. Uh, <clears throat> the deck cleanup, Fortune Johnson has been storing some appliances and some material in there. Uh, they are just about out. 
and uh, they have already, we walked through the upper three floors where they pressure washed and cleaned. They've still got to get the bottom floor and then the, the terrace level, but uh, we're going to make sure it's, it's like new when they leave. Uh, we've got some, the, all of the electrical, his, the electrical lighting has been fixed. We still have some exit signs that need to be, I believe, raised up out of the, uh, out of the, the incoming traffic. Uh, <clears throat> sidewalk improvements. Property documents are being returned every day. We still have a lot of meetings to set up with people. And the county coordination is continuing. Uh, we're, we're on the same page with the county. I think uh, uh, we'll be able to do those projects and there will not be, uh, we'll, be we'll be in coordination on the, on the construction. Uh, city business cleanup, we're still, still planning for May the 1st for the curbside recycling program to be in place. Working on all the documents, all the education documents. Uh, Johnny Green will be at the re the retreat for uh, any code enforcement items. Jason, Johnny, and um, did a great job the other day uh, at, at the uh, the Commerce Club. Uh, had a lot of questions. There's always a lot of interest when you start uh, uh, telling them your your code enforcement guy is a police officer and he wears a badge. They uh, they are they are interested in that. Uh, <clears throat> we need, uh, once again, very important retreat item. We'll have maps and uh, uh, all the documents we need, I think, uh, for discussion purposes on development and zoning guidelines. And Jason, we really need to start working pretty soon on this comp plan update. Yeah, we need to get a contract going. Yeah, we need to get, yeah, need to talk to our good friend, Jim. So, uh, um, package sales implementation. <laughs> First readings tonight, uh, you, Barbara already went over the, uh, the application if there were any questions there. Um, economic development activities, uh, Northside and their remaining property, which is the Tim Stewart property, uh, had one or two early discussions with Charlie and their, their property folks. We probably need to have um, a meeting with a couple of council members and, and talk to them a little bit about the potential for um, uh, housing in that area and just seeing what what kind of input we could get they have some interest there uh, as, as everybody is seeing the Grove go up they're realizing that this is this is a good residential opportunity in this area so uh, I'd like to see that happen but <clears throat> we need to start working on that is, is Charlie with Northside is that who he is he is there real estate person okay. he puts all their deals together and then enables the construction and then he moves to the next project okay. he would be anything that they develop or invest in he's the he's their go-to guy okay. so he's been here it's like yeah several times. i think it's north side realty group or something <clears throat> that and i think that's probably a hundred percent of his business yeah um Let's see, uh, Briscoe Park progress. Um, Lisa and I think I think Matt had some good discussions with county officials down at Lenora. Uh, <clears throat> Tina Fleming, who is the um, director uh, over recreation and other other community services, very open, very positive about working together to make sure we don't duplicate what what they're doing at Lenora in any future community center here. Um, and then of course, <clears throat> at the retreat, we really do need to talk about the Lenora Church property, the farm in front of the, the, uh, the rock down there and what are options there for, for uh, disposing of or using that property. North and Wisteria, the right of way appraisal numbers will be in tomorrow. We talked to the appraiser this morning, uh, so we'll finalize acquisition at that time uh, start working on it and find working towards finalization uh, and we're still waiting on uh, G dot input for any 124 connection um, I have once again I keep pushing them on the remainder of the property they own there for the intersection work that was done around the corner uh, it's a mess I sent them pictures again last week encouraging them to to donate that property to the city and uh, we'll take care of it but we're not going to take care of it now so hopefully we, we see some action Johnny there and have him. Well, start writing yeah. we've lost our uh, 
board member. Um, so we'll just have to see where we go. Um, for the work retreat, I heard back from, I think everybody, but maybe not quite. Everybody's good for March the 4th, because that's what we're set for. Um, <clears throat> With the hotel, a little disheartening, but when we canceled the hotel reservations, they refused to refund the city's money because they didn't feel like there was enough reason to have canceled. Um, so I was just thinking, instead of us incurring hotel fees again, would all of you be agreeable to doing dinner somewhere around here? around Snellville or the local area, and then just getting up and going down Saturday morning and doing the retreat at GMA and then coming back. Butch said we could use, he'll drive the senior center bus down and we can all just You're not gonna make us ride it though, are you? No, you okay. wouldn't be required. I like the sounds of that better. I don't have to worry about packing stuff to go overnight. Staff gets to ride on the bus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Both buses. Oh. <coughs> so, would everybody be agreeable to that? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Good. That's good. I hope we might be able to host dinner the, the Saturday that night <laughs> instead after afterwards. Oh, on Saturday night. Yeah, I don't because I they transferred our deposit. But I don't think the last cancel. But we can always find something else. Keep the discussion work. going. <coughs> yeah, you know. So maybe we do. Yeah, well, we can keep we talking do, about that. Do something afterwards, mm -hmm. maybe. Let me see. Okay. Let me talk, I'll talk to the lady tomorrow and see. Okay. Cool. All right. I mean, unless I, don't let that be the deciding factor. Yeah, we're, well, I didn't realize we're, that. We're so happy. That's why well, no, it's fine. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like I said we, we need to have another event. We're on. You know, we can always do that. So, okay. So. All right, to be continued, but but everybody's good with uh, just going down on Saturday. For a small fee, day. I'll take reservations for a Tahoe ride down there. <laughs> As opposed to the senior center bus. Senior center bus. And we'll take Christie's d d recommendation for Chateau Alon into into okay. account next year. Yeah, that would be great. When I won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I asked a. Uh, Chief Perry to be here to give us an update on enforcement activity. Uh, the police patrol unit has started um, doing extra patrols in neighborhoods to try to remind people to slow down. So how's that Chief? working? <laughs> well, okay. Chief is going to tell us. <laughs> Find out here. So uh, th this started back in in November when we started having discussions. Obviously, we all get complaints about speeders in neighborhoods. And uh, to try to address those, because I mean, normally we're out on the major roads because that's where the majority of our accidents are, so that's where we focus. But we do understand that there are concerns about people speeding in neighborhoods. So, what we try to do is identify uh, particular neighborhoods that we've received the most complaints or places that our patrol people think that there might be uh, violations that are taking place uh, to, to try to reduce any <coughs> risk for kids or whatever people out walking in the neighborhoods. Uh, so we, we started developing the plan in November. We didn't want to roll it out in December because people were shopping for Christmas and we didn't want to give out tickets in the neighborhoods if people, you know, to take away from someone's Christmas present. So we decided to roll this out in, in February. Um, and the plan was to try to do at least one hour in, in a neighborhood every single day of February. Um, so far we've been able to double that. So we, we've done, uh, in the first 12 days, which I haven't pulled the data for today, We've done 24 hours of enforcement inside the neighborhoods. Um, of those 24 hours, we've, we've hit nine different locations, so nine uh, separate uh, streets in the city uh, where we determined would be the highest number of violations. Some of them were, were, uh, were pretty well enforced, but others had very little information, or little, very little violation, very few violations, I'm sorry. Uh, during those 24 hours, we had uh, 30 traffic stops, uh, wrote 32 citations or written warnings, and of those 32 uh, citations, there were 22 speeding violations. I've got a list of all the places that we hit, but for, to summarize uh, the areas that we, we focused on, we, we started out with Harbor Oaks, so we've done 12 hours um, 
of enforcement on Harbor Oaks. During that time, we had 10 stops and nine citations or written warnings. Uh, Springdale Drive, we thought that would be a pretty uh, productive area because there's sometimes, or it seems to be a lot of speeders on that road, but we worked that for two hours when we had one stop and one ticket. Uh, Pine Road, we worked that for an hour, didn't have any stops or citations. Temple Line Trace kind of surprised us because we worked that for four hours. Um, and during that time, we had 12 stops and 14 citations, so people were routinely speeding on Timberline Trace. And I don't know if it's the hill or what, what it is with that neighborhood, but people were definitely speeding. Uh, we uh, did some enforcement on Farmstead Court. Uh, we didn't have any stops on, on that street. Meadow Drive, we went out, we thought there's a, a nice uh, straightaway on Meadow Drive. We've had complaints there before. Uh, we stopped seven cars in one hour and wrote eight tickets, but none of them were for speeding. So people were running stop signs, uh, people not having their seatbelt on, that kind of thing. So we were able to be productive in the neighborhood, but it wasn't in any way connected to speeding. Uh, Ashworth Lake, yes. obviously we get a lot of speeding there, or speeding complaints there. Thank but, you. Uh, but we didn't have any stops or citations uh, during that enforcement. Uh, Long Street was, uh, we did an hour out there, didn't have any violations in Williams Place. We have a constant number of violations at Williams Place. Uh, typically the high schoolers, mm -hmm. when they're coming home, they kept through there. Right. But we weren't able to get any violations. But overall... Wait, uh, remind me, where's Williams? Oh, I know where it is. Yeah, right yep. in the spring. Yep, 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 yep. So overall, it's been <coughs> successful in certain areas, but we're going to continue this throughout the rest of the month, try to do at least one hour. But, I mean, the officers already proven that they've been able to do two hours. Uh, being shorthanded, obviously, calls take precedence uh, or precedent over uh, handling enforcement. Uh, but we are going to continue it through the rest of the rest of the month and track track the data and see if there are places that we need to stay. Uh, I mean, I think it's already been proven that Harbor Oaks could use enforcement pretty regularly and Timberline Trace until people slow down. But we have noticed over the last few days that the places that we were sitting and getting violations, uh, people aren't speeding anymore. Mm -hmm. In one week, yeah. yeah. In one week, yeah. Don't forget Tanglewood. Well, we can't run speed protection on it. In, in the place that would be in the place that they would normally be speeding, uh, we can't get a permit to run speed protection there. So, about the most well, we can well, give warnings, right? No, because it'd be a bad stop. Our luck would find a dead body in the back seat, <laughs> <laughs> and then you couldn't you couldn't detain it because. You <laughs> but overall, it's, I mean, it's a good program so far, and. Uh, well, you could do seatbelt enforcement, couldn't you? On Timberline Trace? No, on Tanglewood. Tanglewood. No, Tangle. Tangle. Yeah, we, we can do any type of enforcement. But I'm just thinking if, if there's a police car there, people are going to slow down. And, and where there's there. a lot of violations are at Tanglewood and Wiltshire, that stop sign. Right. They just and we're, we're fly trying, right through it. Yeah, we're trying to focus on for this uh, event for speeding violations. Yeah, right. Uh, the, the, Meadow, the Meadow Drive was kind of a fluke. We didn't expect that. Uh, but that's what would happen if we went out on Tanglewood. We would stop a bunch of people for stop sign violations, I'm sure. Uh, but the list that we're using is, is continuously changing on where we get a complaint. Uh, Williams Place was added late uh, because somebody called in a complaint. So we're, we're trying to be responsive to the, to the people that are making the complaints. So that's where we're at. Would, it, would it be, um, have you looked at Odom or Street DeVille or El Dorado? That, that, that's, that's on the list. El Dorado, we, we've done uh, stealth stat on El Dorado and... Um, Just not enough? There, there's really not. In most of the neighborhoods, there's not. I, I mean, most times we put the stealth stat out, we find out that there maybe are a couple of violations an hour. And when you're having an officer just sitting there, uh, I mean, that's a lot of sitting for, yeah. you know, maybe maybe two violations, but the when you put a police officer out there, typically people don't speed when they see the police car. So, I mean, it pretty much fixes the problem, but, uh, you know, there's not going to be any enforcement. Which is fine. I mean, we want compliance, especially in our neighborhoods. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you all. Are y'all the, who's responsible for these? The police department. Little treasures. This is yeah. very beautiful. Very nice. Thank you. Those belt bucklets for Get elected. You'll be home. I was hoping for cookies. Yeah, really. Jason wants his to say junior police officer. Yeah. <laughs>
Scott. That's Bobby Howard down on the end. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have any flashing lights. I don't know if that works so well. You can fix wait that. Till, wait till I add them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. We appreciate the police department doing taking on this program. Um, many round us about discussion. This is something I've been talking with Butch about for quite a while. Um, and just, well, I'll just give you a bunch of them. Pass down. I've already looked at it. Um, we've been talking, I think I brought it up before, about some of the roads where we have a lot of um, through traffic on our neighborhood streets. Um, where and the speeds are an issue as well, um, to find ways to slow people down. And we had, it's a multi pronged approach, is what we're, we're working on. I had asked uh, the police department back in November when we talked about purchasing some of the uh, radar signs that go on these uh, speed limit signs to help remind people as one, one step. Uh, the other is the enforcement program that they're doing now here in February. Um, but another option we've been talking about for a while, too, is to actually do some uh, chicanes or some mini roundabouts through some of those longer straightaway streets um, that tend to be more cut through, like Harbor Oaks, Green Valley. Um, we had other streets, too. Um, Mountain View is one in Mountain my View. mind. Um, so some of those type streets that um, we could put these mini roundabouts in to where people are re required to slow down a little bit to, to navigate the circle. Um, Larry Kaiser, who is working with us on the sidewalk program, um, his company, Collaborative Infrastructure, they put a bunch in in Clarkston um, with... He said great success with helping to, to uh, help control some of the traffic uh, speeds in there, too. So wanted to bring this up to everybody, see if y'all are interested in moving forward with taking a look at some of these. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yes. We were told just kind of a off-the-cuff number of maybe eight to $10,000 per circle to put oh, in, depending is... on. Um, <laughs> yeah, which really wouldn't be a lot. Don't don't get wed to that number. Yeah. 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 I don't believe that that's that's which really doesn't be accurate. But, uh. that, that's probably during resurfacing and <clears throat> well, that's eight, what eight thousand above base price. I mean, my my inclination is for us to try to move ahead and maybe put out a little bid package on some of these streets now. If we didn't get enough response on something because it wouldn't be a huge project for a contractor to come in to do but if we didn't get a lot of response maybe we could tie it in with either the street paving or the stormwater projects um you know when we put that bid package out and because we usually bid that out in july right right after the budget later in the year yes um that maybe we get somebody to do it along with with that work that's a waste of time What's that? Which one? Yeah, yeah that was a weird the class. looking thing. The diamond. Yeah. The diamond. That's yeah. just an invitation to see how fast you can go. Well, well some I of express that. Yeah, <laughs> some of all of these may be that too. Well, but so, this one works a lot. Well, you have to do, you know, you have to make enough of a turn that you're going to slow down. Yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to see if y'all would be, if y'all are agreeable. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. To do in this. Or you could just keep them here and here. Maybe something like that could be done to untangle with, just slow things. Yeah. Down. I mean, well, and it really is. That's. I, I think a lot of the subdivisions where we're having the majority of the issues, that there's plenty of right of way. So we're not even talking about right of way acquisition on these, which would help keep the cost down. You too. know, and especially, like, I, I know I keep saying time, but we have no sidewalks there. Right. And, and to walk in the street, and right. I, I literally almost got hit last week because of a car just 
came so close to me, speeding, you know, and it's it's frightening when you're mm -hmm. when you're walking and you and, and you have nowhere to go to get away from them. Mm -hmm. You're in the gutter already. And yeah, and we have the same thing in my neighborhood. Yeah. There's no sidewalks. Yeah. And there's a bunch of speeders there. Yeah, yeah. we know. There's, there's we found some, that. Yeah, there's maybe a few in there, obviously. One of them drives a tell you right <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think it gives a little bit of character to the neighborhoods. I do too. I think it, it creates some interest in the mm -hmm. streets. You could even do, I mean, <clears throat> maybe the neighborhoods, what? You could even do a little landscaping in there mm -hmm. that would look. Nice. Well, yeah. The the landscaping, if you can get the neighborhoods to take care of the landscaping, that will actually help because there will be teenage boys that are going to drive straight over the top of it. So if you have bushes there, that'll dissuade them. Yeah, and this needs to be long enough to accept the car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we haven't put one in. It hasn't had somebody in the middle. Yeah. I miss this part of my education, apparently, <laughs> driving in places we're not supposed, we're not to. supposed to, in the middle of circles and things. It's really kind of difficult. But <laughs> all these signs, you should go. It's good that you're thinking in this way. So the, the one that is the um, rectangle with the diagonal centerpiece, where would that be used? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> page okay. three. Um, page yeah. Three. Page, page three. Yeah, I don't page. like that one. I, I just don't, I've, I've never seen one like that. I'm not sure. This is in the Gwinnett County Traffic Calming Designs yeah. Guide. Yeah. That, you know, maybe that's in a, where you don't have much right away. I mean, there's just, that's just a very little bulge there. So I, I'm, I'm not sure. But um, they all came from uh, okay. Gwinnett County. I, I didn't know if, if this was like, oh, we see this going in this location. Yeah. It's just uh, page three. Page three. This one. Yeah. Of, of the, the, the one that looks diamond. like a diamond. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's <coughs> one actually on I think it's Hoko Kelly going towards. There's actually multiple, and it's not quite as diamond. It's, it's kind of rounded. Yeah. Yeah. Those. Um, that, yeah. yeah. Actually, we actually discussed the. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, not technically, but <laughs> visually it makes you feel like you have to. Yes. But you can drive straight through. Yeah. You can. I've even seen the school buses drive straight. Which, why have Well, yeah, they, they put those up after, I think there's a couple of towers. Yeah. But we'll yeah. take the next step then. Okay. Yes, let's do it. Awesome. All right, and since we have a few minutes, we do need to say, how much time do we need in the exact session? Mm, five minutes. Okay. Um, the City of Civility, this was a, I think it's a new program at GMA. It's the first time I had seen it. It was on one of the, um, mm -hmm. one of the recent emails that came out. And um, I included in the package um, what the pledge is and uh, about the program, uh, Embrace Civility, that GMA was, was putting forth. And uh, I thought this would be a really great thing uh, for the city to go ahead and, and take this step and pass the resolution um, for wanted to run it by all of you and see what you thought. Okay, I have a question on this. Yeah. Um, why wasn't this done before, and why is it why is it now that we want to do a, um, a resolution? It was part. We haven't done it before because GMA hasn't had the program before. So as far as I know, it's a new program. At least I had just seen it <clears throat> yeah, in one just, of the, just like, released. it was like about a month ago. Yeah. There was an email that they put out. And about and I looked at it. seven or eight years ago, it was the City of Ethics program that came through and we adopted the necessary uh, resolution, for that. resolution to become a City of Ethics. So it's just a continuing GMA comes out with different programs. Was I just to receive some phone calls on this? that people wanted to know why not before, why now? You know, with a lot of things that have happened in the past, why is this now? And why wasn't there something like a resolution of some kind in place before? Because there was a lot going on in this city. Yes, you know, there a certainly lot was. was going on. 
And why wasn't there a resolution, you know, created then? Why now? Well, as you know I what? right, and as mm -hmm. I stated, this is a new program with GMA, so it wasn't. We can find out from GMA why they didn't have one. Why before. they didn't have one before? I mean, it, it wasn't it, available to us as a program before. If any one of us had come up with the idea and put the work in and written it up we could have adopted it just in the city. But this is a program put on, put together by GMA. Any other questions? Um, like I said, they were just asking me a lot of questions, so, you know, and for that reason, I'm not going to sign the civility, um, the city of civility, Papers. Papers. Know, I'm a little, yeah, get a solution. Okay, so you wouldn't be supportive if we move forward with it? I won't put, I won't put my name there. Mm -mm. Okay. Because there's too many questions, you know. So. Like? Well, I was actually called a racist. <laughs> Uh, because I did a Juneteenth in the city. I mean, there are a lot of things that were coming up, which I don't want to go and hash back out, but a lot has happened the past um, two years or so. So, and I'm like, why? And even I have that question too. Why now? Why wasn't there something in place? You know? So, because my it would understanding have been nice was. That's something in place. Right, but when my. When all this was going on, and we had a discussion at the stage. You felt that nothing was wrong, you know. The person, they didn't do anything wrong because it's their personal pages, but they're also city leaders, right? And so the city of civility tells you, as a city leader, there are certain things you can do or you shouldn't engage in, right? But the way the conversation went was as though nothing was wrong, nothing happened, you know, and it, it kind of like, you know, it's like, you're contra it's like it's being contradicted, you know, because this says, okay, do things this way, be civil about it, but then on the other side, people can go online and they can slam each other and they can let their henchmen go because their hands are clean. It's, 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 it's like a whole mess, and I don't know how I need to look at this, you know, so for that reason, well, it's not on tonight's agenda. What yeah, is? I mean, what is? Pardon? What is not on tonight's this, agenda? This, this is isn't on tonight's session, agenda. So it's for discussion. Well, right. That's what I'm saying. So, so it's a of civility. If, if you have issues with it, write them down, figure out exactly what the issues are, and we'll, and we'll continue the discussion. Mm -hmm. it's it's on board. We yeah. could always take what GMA has written and adopt it to. <clears throat> what we can mm -hmm. all agree well and that the, the the other thing too is when you're looking at doing something like this and this is a pledge a pledge can't go back and fix things that happened in the past all you can do is pledge to do better and follow what you're you know passing mm -hmm. what the resolution is and passing better behavior in the future. Okay. So and just another question. So if whoever it may be is in violation of or let's say violation, but they're not following the city or the pledge or the resolution, like what is stipulated in there, what consequences are in place or what is in place? You know what I'm saying? What is in place to rectify whatever the behavior is? I Personally, I wouldn't think that a pledge or a resolution like this would necessarily be like an ethics situation where you're, you know, bringing somebody up on ethics charges or something like that. This is a pledge that we as council would be making, a personal pledge. And if you're not living up to your personal pledge, I mean, you're not living up to your personal pledge. It's coming very close still to the ethics, though. But, you know. Okay. Well, I appreciate your your um, comments. Thank you. I was just looking. It looks like it was introduced about two weeks ago.
the city of Savannah tweeted on January 27th. They were the first, or Georgia City tweeted that Savannah was the first to adopt it. So, but it looks like it's been a program out about two weeks. Yeah, I think we got an announcement in the email. Yeah, week. it came on like one of the update emails or something. Okay. All right, so in the interest of time, because we do need a short exec session, so we'll go ahead and do that. During the work session of the mayor and 